In the heart of New Orleans, Louisiana, in the late 19th century, a man with a vision set the stage for what would become an enduring American soft drink legacy. Edward Charles Edmund Bark Sr., an enterprising soul with an insanely long name and a knack for crafting carbonated concoctions, founded the Barks Brothers Bottling Company in 1890, along with his brother Gaston. Little did they know that this journey would pave the way for the creation of one of the most iconic root beer brands in the United States, Barks. Bark's initial foray into the world of soft drinks was marked by his production of a vibrant, orange-flavored soda. This fizzy citrus delight quickly gained popularity, establishing Bark as a skilled beverage craftsman. However, Ed Bark was far from content with just one flavor. He embarked on a journey of flavor experimentation, giving birth to a delightful assortment of soft drinks that spanned the spectrum of taste. His portfolio included delectable options like strawberry, peach, orange, lemon-lime, black cherry, grape, ginger ale, and even cream soda. In the quest for innovation and the pursuit of perfection, Bark relocated to Biloxi, Mississippi. It was there that Bark met a young man on the Mississippi coast named Jesse Robinson and employed him. Robinson was mentored by Bark and later would move to New Orleans to continue brewing under the Bark's name. In 1934, Bark and Robinson would sign a contractual agreement on Bark's product rights, allowing Robinson to make his own concentrate, which is extremely uncommon in beverage bottling licensing. But given the two men were extremely close friends, some freedom was given to Robinson in this transaction. And they often worked on flavors and production challenges that would arise in both Biloxi and New Orleans. A distinctive difference between the Biloxi base root beer and the Louisiana bird one was that the Louisiana bottle was printed with a red label versus the Biloxi blue label. This was to distinguish ownership of bottles as blue labeled ones were returned to Mississippi and vice versa for the red labels. There were also regional taste differences between the various bark bottlers and people wanted to know which they were getting because each formula had their respective cult like following. While there may have been minor formula differences between the two, water was mostly responsible for the different taste. During those early days, the soft drink industry was a very competitive landscape, and trademark disputes loomed over the use of the term root beer. Bark's approach was twofold to this. First, they wanted to steer clear of potential legal conflicts with Hire's root beer, a rival attempting to claim ownership of the term root beer in general. Secondly, Bark's creation had distinct characteristics that set it apart from other root beers of the time, it featured lower sugar content, a higher level of carbonation, it contained caffeine, and notably less foam on the head when poured into a glass. These unique qualities made Bark stand out from a crowded soda market. Despite its name not explicitly containing the words root beer, Bark's captured the hearts and palates of consumers across the nation. It was refreshingly different, and it resonated with the taste buds of those who sought something distinct from the run-of-the-mill offerings. Bark's was, by all accounts, a massive success. The timing of Bark's entry into the soft drink industry couldn't have been better. As the Prohibition era loomed on the horizon, with the ban of alcoholic beverages, people turned to alternative refreshments, and Bark's root beer became a favorite choice. It was a wholesome, family-friendly drink, and its reputation grew exponentially. One of the pivotal moments in Bark's history was the patenting of a unique 12-ounce diamond neck bottle in 1935. At a time when most soft drink bottles contained either 6 or 8 ounces, Barks offered a larger, more satisfying serving for the same price. This innovative approach to packaging played a significant role in the brand's initial success, because when a time when money was tight, there were few reasons to choose any other brand. Even the titans of the beverage industry took notice of Barks' meteoric rise. Coca-Cola, a beverage giant in its own right, attempted to compete with Barks by introducing their own root beer, called Rex in the 1960s. However, this endeavor was met with limited success and eventually led to the discontinuation of the soda in the 1970s. Realizing the competition was fierce, Coca-Cola ultimately decided to embrace rather than fight against Bark's charm, leading to their acquisition of the brand in 1995. As the years passed, Bark's faced various challenges and triumphs. In 1938, a federal government ban on caffeine and root beer threatened the brand's foundation. In response, Barks dropped the term root beer from the name and rebranded as Barks Sr., while Ed Barks Sr. and his team developed a caffeine-free formula to abide by government regulations. Despite this obstacle, Barks maintained its reputation for delivering a crisp and distinct flavor profile. 
The caffeine ban would end up being lifted in 1960, and the original formula, complete with caffeine, returned. To this day, Barks remains one of the few root beers that contains this energizing ingredient, giving it an unmistakable edge in terms of flavor and refreshment. Barks' traditional slogan, it's good, has remained constant throughout the years, etched into every can and bottle as a simple proclamation of its quality and deliciousness. But in the 1990s, Barks introduced another slogan that would further define its identity. Quote, Barks has bite. This catchphrase highlighted the crisp and refreshing taste of the root beer, emphasizing the caffeine content that set it apart from other root beer brands. The commercials that accompanied this slogan are fondly remembered as well, featuring the brand's mascot, Barky the dog, and even temporary tattoos called Bark Twos included in packs of root beer, offering consumers a playful way to engage with the brand. In 2012, Bark's root beer underwent a slight name change, dropping the quote famous old time that you would find on the cans and simply saying Bark's root beer. This adjustment represented an evolution in the brand's identity, signaling that despite the passing years, the commitment to delivering exceptional quality and taste remained unchanged. Today, Bark's root beer proudly stands as an American institution, adored and cherished by generations of soft drink enthusiasts, especially those that tend to lean more towards root beer. Its journey from the streets of New Orleans and Biloxi to the shelves of grocery stores across the country serves as a powerful reminder that tradition and quality can coexist harmoniously. With a rich history, a lasting legacy, and an unwavering commitment to its roots, Bark's Root Beer remains a testament to its slogan, It's Good. That's all I've got for you on the history of Bark's Root Beer. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.